properly. There we are. And share my screen. Uh, this one. Great. Yeah. All right. So hopefully you can all see, all see that. Well, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> awesome. All right. We'll, we'll get going then. All right. So today's about learning methods. Um, more specifically, it's about blue lines, uh, what they mean, and, and how we can use them to learn methods. Um, so, first, we'll go on and talk about what a blue line is. Um, and we'll break it down into its constituent parts. Um, we'll learn what each, uh, there's a lot of numbers <laughs> on a blue line. So we'll learn what each of those numbers mean. And, um, and we'll learn about breaking down the method into a, into kind of bite-sized chunks that we can then uh, take away and, and use those as a, as a learning aid. And then uh, we'll talk about tips for learning methods. So we won't be covering uh, bobs and singles um in this talk uh and uh, i basically just put down uh my thoughts on the uh, on the subject so uh it's what i find helpful uh i just want to say it might it might differ for you it might not make any sense um uh, but please do ask questions at any point if you, there's something you don't understand or or uh, i haven't explained very well and i uh, just interrupt me as, as we go along okay so uh just a bit of an introduction why do we need a blue line? Um, so if we were just to write out the rows of a method, um, so starting in rounds and just writing out the rows as the method produces them, you can see it's just a jumble of numbers. And I don't know about you, but I find it difficult to work out maybe what each bell is doing um, from one row to the next um, without looking, looking at it and scrutinizing it. So, uh, in 1881, uh, Snowden uh, introduced the concept of a blue line in his book Diagrams. And uh, in the companion text, he wrote, I've added in full a plain course of each of the methods in which the path of the travel is made more apparent by a red line um, running through it. And the work of another bell, generally the second, is distinguished by a corresponding blue line. Uh, and so I think this is the first reference to a blue line. So we've been around for, for a while. But you can see just by drawing a line through the two, it makes a clear pattern. And that's, that's what the blue line is. And we can use that to, uh, to learn the method more easily. Uh, so typically when a blue line is, is generated, it's, it's, um, it, you can either write it down yourself, but there's a few websites and I'll give you a link to a few of them in a bit. Um, but when you, when you do it from a website, um, you'll get something that looks a bit like this. So again, you have the red line, uh, yeah, um, which gives you the treble path. Uh, there's the blue line, which gives you the working bell path. There's a start position. So any number that's in a, in a circle is generally um, where, the, where that number bell starts. So you can see the two starts here and wheels its way through the, the, the method. Where it's the four starts here, and that's the second start position, and that's that's where that begins. Um, we have the lead end, so um, this dashed line at the bottom, uh, uh, that's where you have one uh, round block of the, uh, or one lead. So that's where the treble's gone from the from the lead to the back, and then back to the back to the lead. So this is the repeating block of the method. Um, halfway along you've got the half lead and that's useful to know because in some methods you might dodge the half lead or um, the person who's in charge might say this is the half lead and might expect people to know what that means um, and so for this method it's not too important but some more advanced methods it can be and uh, so that's just where the treble is um, at its symmetry point and then on the left here, we've got the pace notation. So um, we're not going to go too much into pace notation, 
uh, oh, we're not going to go into it all, but that's that's what that is there. It, it's just a unique set of um, crosses and numbers that describe the method um, uh, in a unique fashion. Okay, so what actually can we tell from the blue line? Um, so when we're reading it, we read from top left uh, to bottom right, and uh, time kind of goes uh, across, and then uh, down to the next row, and then across, and then down to the next row, and then across. Uh, so it's read in like a, a raster kind of pattern, like on an old CRT. Uh, but if you just follow what the two's doing, uh, so initially the two swaps with a one. So it's gone from second place uh, to the to the lead. Um, so when the when the line goes towards the bottom left, um, that means the bell has to ring faster. It's ringing to get from the second place into the first, first place in the change, and so it has to ring faster to achieve that. Um, likewise, you'll see if, it's, if the line moves between rows towards the right, such as what the red line does at the start here, where it's hunting out, um, to the treble, hunting to the back, that's moving slower. Yeah? When, you're, when you're playing hunting out, you're moving, moving slower each, each change. So uh, that is one last thing, which is a uh, line going going at the kind of rounds pace, um, and that's when the when the line moves straight down. So the the direction of the line tells you the speed that the, the, that you have to move your bell in. So it's moving towards the left, you have to ring faster. If it's going straight down, you have to ring at kind of round speed. And then if you're if it's moving towards the right here. Then you're uh, uh, then you're ringing slower. So, uh, what else can we see in this blue line? Well, we can see that for the most part, um, all the bells are playing hunting. Um, so, if you just look at the two, and maybe let's let's do a four. So the four uh, playing hunts down to the lead. Uh, when it starts, it leads for one blow, and then playing hunts out to the back. But when it gets to the back, uh, you can see it just this pink, and um, where it rings slower for one blow, and then, sorry, it rings quicker for one blow, and then rings slower for one blow, and then rings out the kind of round space over the lead end. Um, and that's what we call a dodge. So um, just by looking at the blue line and identifying these patterns, we can then start to break down the method into smaller chunks. Okay, uh, just quickly, um, we can also put all those lines together. Um, it's not done very often, but it's really useful for seeing how the method fits together. So um, we can see here we've got the red line, still the treble, the blue line, still the two, but we also have a pink and a green and a yellow and a um, gray line, and uh, if we just look at the, the pattern it creates, we can see we have these uh, X's, and so these are the, those dodges, um, and we can see that two bells are dodging together here, and then two different bells are dodging together here, and it doesn't really matter um, for us at the moment what two bells they are, um, but we can sort of make up rules about them uh, just by looking at what everything's doing together. So we can make up a rule, say, when this bell is making fourths, so one, two, three, four, fourth bell, uh, fourth place, then the bells behind it are dodging. That's a simple rule that we can generate by looking at the grid. So um, maybe that's a bit advanced, but I think it's useful to know. OK, so how do we go from a blue line to something that we can uh, learn? Um, uh, so uh, I've, I've called this uh, breaking it down. So we break it down first lead by lead or bell by bell. So uh, we look at uh, the, the blue line, single chord Bob minor again. You can see it's broken down into second place bell, fourth place bell, sixth place bell, first place bell, third place bell. Um, so 
Uh, each of these is a, is a manageable, manageable chunk that we can learn individually. Um, it's especially useful if you bring surprise or if you want to surprise methods. Um, but more importantly, is to know your start. So if you really truly know the, the, the method, if you really learned it, then it doesn't matter what bell you're placed on in the tower um, because you, you know where each bell starts. And uh, I, I find it easier to, to break it down uh, into smaller chunks, like the lead ends. Um, so there's less to learn uh, in, 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 in individual parts. Okay, so like I said before, there's also rules we can generate. So like from, uh, from the grid, uh, we know that, uh, say, we have to dodge when the treble's leading. Um, uh, that's one rule that we can generate from looking at the blue line. Um, and that can be a general reminder that when we're rigging, we hear or see the treble's leading. Um, now we know we have to dodge. Uh, also, uh, another rule we could generate would be the circle of work, which we'll talk about soon. Uh, we can look at the um, uh, look at the method, look at the blue line, and we can see that there are um, common pieces of work that we can uh, we can give names to and group group bits together. So uh, we'll we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, but finally, I think blue line is, is most important for learning the whole line. So developing a mental picture that you can then refer to uh, whilst you're ringing uh, is important for quick reading. Uh, okay, so uh, let's look at payroll doubles as an example of what we, as, as an exercise, what we might do if we were trying to learn the next. So this is the, uh, the line written now in full down the left hand side here. Uh, four pain bob doubles. And in it's 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 this way. Mm -hmm. um, so we started from the two. And you can see that the two goes down to the lead, it goes out the back, mm -hmm. uh, dodges yes, three, four down. Mm -hmm. uh, no, why is it circle? Sorry. Okay. Came on. Did you say something? Okay, um, so yeah, it goes on the lead, uh, then it comes, punch back out, makes long bits, uh, punch back down to the lead, leads, there's a free throw up dodge, uh, out back lie, goes down, leads, and makes seconds, and then it's back to its starting position. Um, so if we were to, to learn this, we first break it down to the lead ends. So you break it down so you just see the, the, the two and learn what the two does. Break down, learn what the four does, break down, learn what the five does, and what the three does. Okay. And then the second thing we were talking about was rules. Are there any rules that we can see? So you might notice that if you're an even bell, the two or the four, that you start by going quickly, you're going down to the lead. But if you're an odd bell, then you start by going out to the back. And if you're a five, then you're not, so you're already out of the back. You can stay there. Um, the second rule you might think of, well, everyone is just plain hunting, right? Until you get to the lead end, which is here, when the treble leads, and then you do your dodge or your bit of work. So then uh, what are the bits of work look like? Well, it's difficult to see them uh, like this because they all happen at the lead end. That's one of our rules. Um, so I've just uh, rolled them out again. So we can see them a bit more clearly. Um, so first we have the three four down dodge. Um, uh, right here. Um, we have the long fits where the, the well uh, rings and four blows and fits and then goes back down to the lead. Three four up dodge where you're hunting out and then you go um, quick for one blow and then hunt out slow again. Four seconds where you're leading make seconds over the trail and then lead again. So if you want to learn the method of playing Bob doubles, um, we can write it out. We can write out what we're, what we're gonna do. 
Um, so we could be, we could do this in longhand, um, where we'd write down lead, hunt to the back, lie, three, four, down dodge. Um, um, three, four, down dodge, and then lead, hunt out of the back, do long fits, um, and then carry, carry that on. Um, but we could break it down further. So I've, I've put down in bold pieces of work. And if we just write those out, then um, we get something that looks like this. And this might be familiar to some of you. Um, it might resemble the circle of work. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about the circle of work versus the yeah. lines and each of its benefits um, for learning methods. So. When we break down the blue line, um, I said too much, but until we can't break down any further, what we end up with is the circle of work. And this is, I think, a really useful learning aid. It's simple. It, uh, you, you can't get the method any more simplified than the circle of work. Um, but maybe it's too simple. It only explains um, what's happening in this case when the trouble's leading. And there's a large loss of information. Uh, so the way I view the circle of work is it's it's a it's an aid memoir to get back to the blue line. So um, we can we can use this circle of work um, to to learn the method, um, but it doesn't tell us what we have to do in between doing the the dodges. Does that make sense? Whereas the blue line. Uh, has all that information in it. So if we can uh, try and use the circle of work, then get back to the, the blue line. That's, uh, that, that's my advice. Because the blue line tells us everything. It tells us who we're dodging with. So the two is dodging with the five here. It tells us where we pass the treble, which can be a really useful thing um, to, to, to know. When you're trying to learn methods, um, it tells you where each lead starts. It doesn't here because I put it off by accident, but um, it did before. Um, and it tells us what happens with the half lead. In this case, you're just playing hunting. Um, and it tells you the lead end order. So in this case, two, four, five, three. Um, yeah. Are there any questions? No. Nope. Okay. So I wanted to make this applicable to, to everyone. So I know there are a few people who, um, who, who aren't just interested in, in playing up doubles or um, single court Bob minor. Um, so we can also uh, use the same rules to uh, apply them to Cambridge major, um, Cambridge minor. Uh, but this method, and you can see the blue line is a bit more complicated than it was for box doubles, mainly because there are more methods. There are more, um, more bells. There are eight bells because it's major. Um, secondly, you can see the, the the treble isn't just plain hunting; it's it's doing dodges itself, um, and uh, that makes the method a bit longer. Each lead is a bit longer because of that. Um, well, we can start to break it down into manageable chunks. And we can see that uh, the pieces of work kind of come together in groups. So you can see we have this long piece of work here. We have some dodges. We can set, recognize the same dodges that we had in, in tempo doubles. Uh, they're no different in terms of what you would do when you're on the bell. Um, here we have a, a double dodge, um, which is where so in a, in a single dodge, you, you ring quick for one blow and then carry on. Whereas here, where we ring quick and then slow and then quick and then slow. Uh, so that's a double dodge up. And you can see that repeats uh, here for the double dodge down. Um, and then finally, we have uh, these um, dodges and places that come together. Um, so we can group those together as well. And if we do that, we can see that uh, in Cambridge, 
there's only really four pieces of equipment. Yeah. Um, there are dodges in the middle of the chain. So double dodges are the at the back. So in eighth and seventh place, we have this front piece of work um, where we dodge, lead, make seconds, dodge, lead, and dodge. And that's here. And then there are these Cambridge places, uh, so called, where you dodge, make a place, make a place, dodge, make a place, make a place, and then dodge again. So by breaking the method down um, and by grouping pieces of work together, we can make the act of learning the method more simple, like simplified. Um, Uh, and then we can start uh, to write it back out again. So then second space, which start, started off as this long uh, long line, uh, I can break down into four lines of text. So I can say we do the front work. I'm going to just uh, set D for dodge. Um, so dodge three, four up. This is our dodge in three, four place. It's up, so it's going towards the back. Um, double dodge lie and dodge and then more importantly come six by twelve. Uh yeah might have missed dodge because six by twelve. Likewise for the six by spell uh we can uh, we can write that down simply as well. Uh lead dodge three four up uh, sorry lead and dodge dodge three four up five six places so that's those Cambridge places I mentioned and then uh dodge seven, eight up and become seven space up. So by, by breaking the method down to smaller chunks, it doesn't matter the complexity of the method. Um, it, it all adds up to just making, making it simpler. Uh, so now we know uh, the, the blue line. Now, what are my tips for learning it, apart from breaking it down? Um, well, write it out. I think that's the most important. Um, I, I'm not sure why. And I thought a lot about it um, over the course of the last week about why writing it out helps you to learn and ha helps you to ring the method. Um, and I, I can't come up with a satisfactory answer, but it does. Um, well, it, it does for me. If I, if I write out the line over and over and over again, and it's cemented in my mind, Going faster, going slower, and it just, um, it just so my advice is write it out, write it out, write it out until you're not thinking about what the method line is. You can just do it off by heart. Um, so you can make flashcards. Um, we recently ran uh, a peel of 14 Spice Royal, and I had a stack of cards. Each card had a separate uh, lead end on it. And on the back of the card, it had the, the, the answer. Like, so it's, it would say on the front of the card, the method, so say Cambridge, and it would say six base spell. And on the back, it would have the line for six base spell written out. And so I'd look at the text and I'd try to recite or, or then write down six base spell, flip it over and compare what I just said to what was on. So flashcards can help. Uh, learn it to pay spell individually. So uh, that's part of the breaking it down process. There are apps. So there's a uh, there's mobile, which is Pay's app um, on Android and on uh, iOS phones. Um, or you can get uh, there's a, a one called Blue Line, and there's another one. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but. Uh, uh, I think Peter Harrison uses it. Methodology, so it's called. Um, so there are apps, phones, and you can use those to learn learn methods, and it uh, has the same benefit, I think, to writing it out, writing out the blue line. Say it aloud over and over again. Um, basically, we're learning it by rote. I think that's the point. Just, uh, uh, I find square paper helps. Um, without the square paper, my like, lines are all over the place. 
Uh, sing it. I don't know. Um, write it out again. I think it's easy. <laughs> yep. Uh, so there's some more um, uh, more things here. So these three websites are all um, from. Uh, oh, so yeah, they, they, they all generate blue lines. So uh, you can follow those to get if you want to find a blue line. Uh, type in the method name and it will generate the blue line for you. And then there's some further uh, content here, which I'll, I'll put in the chat and you can, you can bookmark those um, for yourself. So I think that's it. Um, thanks for listening. Are there any questions? Thank you, Richard. Thank you. We're confused. <laughs> Thank uh, Richard, you. Richard, I've got a question for you, mate. Yep. Are, are you going to post those uh, that slide deck somewhere for people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this the the slides. I can yeah. I can post the slides and share the slides. Definitely. Yep. Cool. Um, yep. Uh, what I'll do. Um, is I can put them in the uh, on the YouTube channel. So I'll be a, I think I'll, I'll just send 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 it to the main list. It's probably good. Yeah. Richard. Yeah. Um. When you said you write it write it down again and again, um, are you meaning write all the bells? Um, in a in that row, and then the next lot of bells, or you mean no, just no. bell that you're going to ring? Just the blue line. So, okay. um, yeah. So, obviously, you're going to ring all the bells. So you need to write out the uh, the blue line, but maybe write out the blue line starting from the second, and then starting from the six, and then starting from the um, from the seven or. Okay, and, and in the position it is, sort of thing, like like um, if you're number two, you just write two on the first row and then and where two is on the second row and where two yeah. is on the third row as you're going down. Exactly, yeah. So um, just give me a second. Um, if I just... I can share my screen again. Uh, he says. Yeah. I always forget to quit chat. Okay, so this is um, this is one of those websites. Um, and we can say we want to learn. I don't know. Trying to triples. How about Bob doubles? <laughs> Bob doubles, sure. Uh, same regiments, Bob doubles and Bob doubles. Okay, so uh, what you'd end up with if if you if you were writing it out, uh, like I said, you just you don't just end up with this blue line, nothing else. Yeah. So you um, starting from the two, you'd write out the like two, and then draw that line. So say and and say as you're writing it out, say it. So say two. I'm leading, hunting out to the back. I'm lying behind. And then I'm dodging three, four down. I never noticed before, but this actually tells you the, um, the piece of work you're doing there. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, so Thank then when you. Finish, you just end up with uh, with this blue blue line. Yep. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. All right. Any more <laughs> questions, uh, Jeff? Yes, the, um, you know, I was uh, going okay with playing Bob Doubles and then my head started to hurt really bad when you got onto Cambridge. Um, but you made a mention of a term that I've heard before and I just can't get my head around it, and that's uh, make a place. Could you explain that at all, please? Um, yeah, so uh, making a place just means staying in the same position. So if we're thinking about... Um, Bob doubles, uh, for instance, uh, and when we make when we make fits, yeah, we make long fits and bob doubles. Um, uh, that's making a place. 
So, mm -hmm. I mean, leading is making a place. Uh, you, you're staying in that same place for, for two blows. Mm -hmm. as, as opposed to hunting where you're moving between, chain, uh, moving between positions. Um, if you were to make a place, it's, it's staying in that same position for, for two blows. Thank you. Um, another question, Richard. Um, I tend to ring the same bell and I feel comfortable there and I sort of know the methods that I'm uh, dealing with. How do you feel about people staying on the same bell rather than moving uh, up up to a heavier or a lighter bell, somewhere different on the methods? I, uh, I mean, I think each of their own. Um, I, I think that uh, some people can't ring heavy bells. Uh, well, I mean, like physically find it difficult to ring heavy bells. Yeah. Um, and so that's maybe one reason why one might not ring um, starting from the six, for example. Um, I think it's good practice to move around um, and start from different bells. Um, even, if, even if that's just ringing, starting from the two, starting from the three. Um, but I, I mean, I recognize that it's not always possible. Yeah, okay. It was more to make yourself more familiar with the whole um, method rather than... Yeah, I, I, think, I think if you're learning it, it, it irrespective of what bell you're going to ring it from, you should know where each other bell starts. Mm -hmm. Because I, th I think without that information, you don't, I, I, I would say you don't really know the method. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe I'm being too um, <laughs> harsh. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, I'm not seeing any more waving. Um, so uh, I'll stop this recording, then we'll, we'll start the next one.